Hey there Bixby developers, this is John the Pan, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite Bixby Studio IDE tips and tricks. In particular this is mainly to help you build for Bixby even faster. Before I continue, all the shortcuts I'll be showing will be on the Mac OS, however pretty much all these shortcuts will translate over to Windows with command being equivalent to the control key on Windows and the Mac option key being equivalent to the Alt key on Windows. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now one thing to note about Bixby Studio is that it actually uses the Monaco editor, which is the same editor that powers VS Code behind the scenes. So a lot of these shortcuts will be familiar to you VS Code users out there. I'm going to start off with one of the most useful shortcuts in my opinion, which is Command P. Command P brings up a file search system. So now I can search for, let's say, copycat, and then I have the copycat model and JS files right here. Another cool thing is you can search for the actual file extension. So if I do .model or something like that, you'll see that it's showing uh, all my various model files. And you can do that, for example, with views and dialogues as well. And then you just double click or whatever to open it. And in case you're wondering what shortcuts are out there, you can always hit Command Shift P, and th this will bring up a bunch of commands in Bixby Studio, along with the shortcuts next to it uh, on the right side, if there are shortcuts available for that command. And for this next example, I'm going to go to a, a view file real quick. Now this one is perhaps one of the most useful shortcuts in Bixby land. And on Mac, it's Control Space. Um, I will have the shortcut for Windows. Uh, displayed in post editing at the top, but this does an autofill which shows you all the available components or keys that you can place uh, at this level. And let's say I want to place a compound card and then I open the curly brackets and hit enter. I can control space again and you can see what key keys are available and just he keep control spacing and you'll see all this stuff that you can put inside of each of these components. And um, if you're unsure whether to put curly brackets uh, or parentheses, one trick is to, if you, if you do the parentheses, you'll see that it says no suggestions when I press uh, control space. But if I have curly brackets and do control space, you'll see that it gives me uh, various suggestions. This can help you realize whether you need to use curly brackets or parentheses without having to necessarily go through the documentation so one of the best applications for control space is once you're in some parentheses and you don't remember what styles are available, just hit control space, let's say in the uh, style key in paragraph, and you'll see all the different text styles that you can place in here. So the next thing that I want to show you is some of these settings in Bixby Studio. You can press command comma, and it'll bring up the settings tab. Alternatively, you can click on uh, this thing up here and then click preferences, and that'll bring up the settings tab right here. In the settings, if you don't value your eyesight, you can use the light theme. Uh, sorry for my viewers who just had their retinas burned. One thing that I personally really like to turn off is actually enable autosave. And you can always explore what each of these different things do. Uh, speaking of word wrap, I typically like that being on, so I'm gonna enable that real quick. Let's rapid fire through a few commonly known shortcuts. Command S saves your currently open file. Useful if you turned off autosave. Command Option S saves all the files in all your open tabs. Command F finds the text in your currently open file. And this way you can just press enter to go through. Command W closes the current tab. And I'm gonna open back up my JS file with Command P. Now let's go even faster through some more shortcuts that are even more commonplace and universal. You can do Command Z to undo, Command Shift Z to redo, Control C to copy what you've highlighted, and you can do Command V to paste what you've copied. If you don't have anything highlighted, you can just do Command C and it will copy that entire line. So now when I do Command V to paste it, you'll see that it will paste the entire line there. Now, Command X cuts text, and you can always paste it with Command V. 
Similar to Command C with copy, if you don't have anything selected, you can cut out an entire line and then paste it somewhere else. And Command A selects everything. So on Mac, you can also do Control Tab to switch between some tabs. And one thing that I find a little bit more useful than that personally is Command Shift Bracket, which allows you to go to the next tab, the right bracket, goes over to the right tab, or goes right one tab, and then the left bracket goes left one tab. You can use the command arrow keys to quickly move around your document. Command up brings the cursor all the way to the top. Command down brings the cursor to the bottom. And if you're in a line, you can do command right to go to the end of the line, and command left to go to the beginning of the line. And let's say I just want to copy that. I can hold uh, shift and then press right and then Command C to copy, just as an example, if I don't want to move my mouse. And now for zooming, you can do Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out to adjust to your heart's content. And let's say you wanna set it back to the default zoom, just do Command zero. So that's cool, now how can we kind of apply this to do code more quickly? Uh, let's say I want to delete an entire line, I can do Command right, and then press Command, and hold Command and press back, delete or backspace, and that will delete the entire line. I can control Z to undo that. And now I can press command X to cut out that line and move it up, whatever I want to do there. And finally, one extremely important uh, shortcut to know is command control space. And this is Mac exclusive, so this will bring up the emojis. You can insert your emoji. So if you're tired of your code looking messy, or you didn't bother cleaning it up as you went, you can use Bixby's built-in Prettier with Command Option L, and that'll format your JavaScript files. And while you're in Bixby land, you can use Command Bar to auto-indent all your brackets like this. And this is also really useful for telling if you are missing a bracket, for example, I just deleted this one. And let's say I have some things that aren't properly indented. If I press it and go to the bottom, and notice that it's actually missing a bracket there. So I'm just gonna use Control Z to undo that example real quick. And now let's say you're an employee at Amazon and you're building something cool in Bixby Studio. And then your boss starts to walk towards you. You can quickly smash the Command H to hide Bixby Studio. You can use Command Shift F to search for text throughout all of your currently open capsules and files. And you can use Control Shift R to replace whatever found with Command Shift F. So with Command Shift R, you can replace all instances of whatever you found with whatever, and in this case, Herp Derp as an example. Just click the replace all button. So now let's say Bixby Studio is having some hiccups. You can always use Command R, which will restart Bixby Studio. And finally, you can always press Command Q to quit Bixby Studio. A couple more IDE specific shortcuts are Command 7 to open the simulator, and Command 8 while you're in the editor to open the submissions tab. And finally, Command Shift D to open up the debugger. And that actually opened up for me in my other monitor, so I'll move it over here real quick. And on Mac, like with other programs that you have open, you can always hit Command tilde to switch between the different windows that you have available. So for window arrangement, you'll notice how I had it arranged. And what I like to do is I like to have the simulator in view on this side at the largest that the simulator can be. And let's just say that the simulator was like this and Bixby Studio was like this. First, I maximize Bixby Studio. Then I shrink it a bit. And then over here on the simulator, I make the simulator uh, as tall as it'll be. And then I expand the simulator to make sure that this screen is at 100% for mobile. And you can also move this in and out to adjust the size of this area. 
So this way, I can always see the simulator when I'm doing my development. You can see me. And this is particularly useful for uh, working on views and stuff. That way you can see exactly which components are showing up with the code as well. Now a few tips for the simulator. You can click on this to make sure uh, that you have the correct capsule and target selected, and then just click Confirm. And sometimes there's a Compile button there. Just press that. And in here, just press Enter you can see me. to show that. And then you can press the press and hold the little microphone icon. Say, you can see me. You can see me. To use voice to do an input as well. Uh, let's say you want to reset the context in this conversation. So say that with John's voice. Without resetting the context, you can see me. You'll see that it takes the previous utterance and says it with John. But if you want to reset the, the context, press Command, Shift, and Enter. What would you like John to say? And that's as if you just had reset the simulator and then did run the what utterance. What would you like John to say? So yes, this is useful for saving time so you don't have to press the reset key every single time that you do that. And also in the simulator, you can press Option Up to toggle through the previous utterances. You can see me. And let's say I wanted to run that, run this utterance again, just press Command Up. And you can always press Command Up or Down to move backwards and forward with your history of utterances. So one of my personal favorite commands in the Monaco editor is the Command D command, which selects the next available instance of that inside your file. So let's say I have this console and I want to select the next console, which is up here. I just hit Command D and then it goes up to that next one. This is, this is very useful for changing variable names throughout just one file instead of using Control Shift F and Control Shift R, which replaces it in all the files. So let's say I wanted to change the name of reset input. I can just Command D and then do new name reset input, just like that. Let's say you did the hard work and you made the vocab file for all these voices and you actually need to make the uh, corresponding symbols for each of the voices. Now you could obviously just type one at a time, but another option is to combine the shortcuts that you've learned. So I'm just going to paste all that from the previous file. And now right here, I know that it is only after each voice in each line that this set of characters appears. So I can press Command D to select the next one and then just hold it to select all of them. Then I can use Command Right and Shift to select the rest of it and delete it. And then I can just add a parentheses at the end and then hold Command and press Left to move the cursor to the left and then press Shift and Right to highlight the uh, apostrophe there and then Press shift and right to delete that uh, extra parentheses. So now all I have to do is type symbol and I'll add a space as well to make it look a little bit better. And there you go. Just like that in almost no time at all, instead of manually typing in each name one by one, you can very quickly uh, use Monaco editor features to make your files like this. So yeah, I just want to show you guys some quick tips and tricks that I use when it comes to developing for Bixby. And a lot of those Monaco editor specific things are useful for, you know, VS Code or uh, a lot of other platforms as well. And hopefully you found something that was useful in this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name is John the Pan, technical evangelist for Bixby. And yeah, that's it.